Peace is the concept of harmonious well-being and freedom from hostile aggression. In a social sense, peace is commonly used to mean a lack of conflict such as war and freedom from fear of violence between individuals or heterogeneous relatively foreign or distinct groups. Throughout history some of the most extraordinary and benevolent leaders have used peace talks to establish a certain type of behavioral restraint that has resulted in the establishment of regional peace or economic growth through various forms of agreements or peace treaties. Such behavioral restraint has often resulted in de-escalation of rhetorical and physical conflicts, greater economic interactivity, and consequently substantial prosperity. The avoidance of war or violent hostility can be the result of thoughtful active listening and communication that enables greater genuine mutual understanding and therefore compromise. Leaders often benefit tremendously from the prestige of peace talks and treaties that can result in substantially enhanced popularity. Psychological peace such as a peaceful thinking and emotions is perhaps less well defined yet often a necessary precursor to establishing behavioral peace. Peaceful behavior sometimes results from a peaceful inner disposition. Some have expressed the belief that peace can be initiated with a certain quality of inner tranquility that does not depend upon the uncertainties of daily life for its existence. The acquisition of such a peaceful internal disposition for oneself and others can contribute to resolving of otherwise seemingly irreconcilable competing interests. Because psychological peace can be important to behavioral peace, leaders sometimes de-escalate conflicts through compliments and generosity. Small gestures of rhetorical and actual generosity have been shown in psychological research to often result in larger levels of reciprocal generosity and even virtuous circles of generosity. Such benevolent selfless behavior can eventually become a pattern that may become a lasting basis for improved relations between individuals and groups of people. Peace talks often start without preconditions and preconceived notions, because they are more than just negotiating opportunities. They place attention on peace itself over and above what may have been previously perceived as the competing needs or interests of separate individuals or parties to elicit peaceful feelings and therefore produce benevolent behavioral results. Peace talks are sometimes also uniquely important learning opportunities for the individuals or parties involved. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The term «peace» originates most recently from the Anglo-French pays, and the Old French pays, meaning «peace, reconciliation, silence, agreement» 11th century. But, pays itself comes from the Latin pax, meaning Peace, compact, agreement, treaty of peace, tranquility, absence of hostility, harmony. The English word came into use in various personal greetings from C.1300 as a translation of the Hebrew word shalom, which, according to Jewish theology, comes from a Hebrew verb meaning to be complete, whole. Although peace is the usual translation, however, it is an incomplete one, because shalom, which is also cognate with the Arabic salam, has multiple other meanings in addition to peace, including justice, good health, safety, well-being, prosperity, equity, security, good fortune, and friendliness, as well as simply the greetings, hello, and goodbye. At a personal level, peaceful behaviors are kind, considerate, respectful, just, and tolerant of others' beliefs and behaviors tending to manifest goodwill. This latter understanding of peace can also pertain to an individual's introspective sense or concept of her, himself, as in being at peace in one's own mind, as found in European references from C.1200. The early English term is also used in the sense of quiet. Reflecting calm, serene, and meditative approaches to family or group relationships that avoid quarreling and seek tranquility, an absence of disturbance or agitation. In many languages, the word for peace is also used as a greeting or a farewell, for example the Hawaiian word aloha, as well as the Arabic word salam. In English the word peace is occasionally used as a farewell, especially for the dead, as in the phrase rest in peace. Wolfgang Dietrich in his research project which led to the book The Palgrave International Handbook of Peace Studies 2011 maps the different meanings of peace in different languages and from different regions across the world. 
Later, in his Interpretations of Peace in History and Culture 2012, he groups the different meanings of peace into five peace families, energetic, harmony, moral, justice, modern, security, postmodern, truth, and transrational, a synthesis of the positive sides of the four previous families and the society. <laughs> Religious beliefs Religious beliefs often seek to identify and address the basic problems of human life, including the conflicts between, among, and within persons and societies. In ancient Greek-speaking areas the virtue of peace was personified as the goddess Irene, and in Latin-speaking areas as the goddess Pax. Her image was typically represented by ancient sculptors as that of a full-grown woman, usually with a horn of plenty and scepter and sometimes with a torch or olive leaves. Christianity Christians, who believe Jesus of Nazareth to be the Jewish Messiah called Christ meaning anointed one, interpret Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 as a messianic prophecy of Jesus in which he is called the Prince of Peace. In the Gospel of Luke, Zechariah celebrates his son John, and you, child, will be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give his people knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God by which the daybreak from on high will visit us to shine on those who sit in darkness and death's shadow, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Numerous pontifical documents on the Holy Rosary document a continuity of views of the popes to have confidence in the Holy Rosary as a means to foster peace. Subsequently, to the encyclical Mens Mayo, 1965, in which he urged the practice of the Holy Rosary, the prayer so dear to the Virgin and so much recommended by the Supreme Pontiffs and is reaffirmed in the encyclical Christi Matri, 1966, to implore peace. Pope Paul VI stated in the Apostolic Ricorans Mensis, October 1969, that the Rosary is a prayer that favors the great gift of peace. <laughs> Islam Islam derived from the root word salam which literally means peace. Muslims are called followers of Islam. Quran clearly stated, those who have believed and whose hearts are assured by the remembrance of Allah. Unquestionably, by the remembrance of Allah, hearts are assured. And stated, O oh you who have believed, when you are told. Space yourselves. In assemblies, then make space, Allah will make space for you. And when you are told. Arise. Then arise, Allah will raise those who have believed among you and those who were given knowledge, by degrees. And Allah is acquainted with what you do. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Buddhism. Buddhists believe that peace can be attained once all suffering ends. They regard all suffering as stemming from cravings in the extreme greed, aversions, fears, or delusions. To eliminate such suffering and achieve personal peace, followers in the path of the Buddha adhere to a set of teachings called the Four Noble Truths a central tenet in Buddhist philosophy. <inaudible> Hinduism Hindu texts contain the following passages May there be peace in the heavens, peace in the atmosphere, peace on the earth. Let there be coolness in the water, healing in the herbs and peace radiating from the trees. Let there be harmony in the planets and in the stars, and perfection in eternal knowledge. May everything in the universe be at peace. Let peace pervade everywhere, at all times. May I experience that peace within my own heart. Let us not concord with our own people, and concord with people who are strangers to us. Celestial twins, create between us and the strangers a unity of hearts. May we unite in our minds, unite in our purposes, and not fight against the heavenly spirit within us. Let not the battle cry rise amidst many slain, nor the arrows of the war god fall with the break of day. A superior being does not render evil for evil. This is a maxim one should observe. One should never harm the wicked or the good or even animals meriting death. A noble soul will exercise compassion even towards those who enjoy injuring others or cruel deeds. Who is without fault? The chariot that leads to victory is of another kind. Valor and fortitude are its wheels. Truthfulness and virtuous conduct are its banner. Strength, discretion, self-restraint and benevolence are its four horses. 
harnessed with the cords of forgiveness, compassion and equanimity. Whoever has this righteous chariot, has no enemy to conquer anywhere. Topic. Inner peace, meditation and prayerfulness Psychological or inner peace i.e. peace of mind refers to a state of being internally or spiritually at peace, with sufficient knowledge and understanding to keep oneself calm in the face of apparent discord or stress. Being internally at peace is considered by many to be a healthy mental state, or homeostasis and to be the opposite of feeling stressful, mentally anxious, or emotionally unstable. Within the meditative traditions, the psychological or inward achievement of peace of mind is often associated with bliss and happiness. Peace of mind, serenity, and calmness are descriptions of a disposition free from the effects of stress. In some meditative traditions, inner peace is believed to be a state of consciousness or enlightenment that may be cultivated by various types of meditation, prayer, tai chi shiwan, tai ji quan tai ji quan, yoga, or other various types of mental or physical disciplines. Many such practices refer to this peace as an experience of knowing oneself. An emphasis on finding one's inner peace is often associated with traditions such as Buddhism, Hinduism, and some traditional Christian contemplative practices such as monasticism, as well as with the New Age movement. Satyagraha Satyagraha, Sanskrit, Satyagraha, Satyagraha is a philosophy and practice of nonviolent resistance developed by Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. He deployed satyagraha techniques in campaigns for Indian independence and also during his earlier struggles in South Africa. The word satyagraha itself was coined through a public contest that Gandhi sponsored through the newspaper he published in South Africa, Indian Opinion, when he realized that neither the common, contemporary Hindu language nor the English language contained a word which fully expressed his own meanings and intentions when he talked about his nonviolent approaches to conflict. According to Gandhi's autobiography, the contest winner was Maganlal Gandhi presumably no relation, who submitted the entry Satagraha, which Gandhi then modified to Satyagraha. Etymologically, this Hindic word means truth firmness, and is commonly translated as steadfastness in the truth or truth force. Satyagraha theory also influenced Martin Luther King Jr. during the campaigns he led during the civil rights movement in the United States. The theory of satyagraha sees means and ends as inseparable. Therefore, it is contradictory to try to use violence to obtain peace. As Gandhi wrote, They say, means are, after all, means. I would say, means are, after all, everything. As the means so the end. A contemporary quote sometimes attributed to Gandhi, but also to A.J. Must, sums it up, There is no way to peace, peace is the way. Topic. Justice and injustice Since classical times, it has been noted that peace has sometimes been achieved by the victor over the vanquished by the imposition of ruthless measures. In his book Agricola the Roman historian Tacitus includes eloquent and vicious polemics against the rapacity and greed of Rome. One, that Tacitus says is by the Caledonian chieftain Calgacus, ens aufer trucidere rapere falsus nominibus imperium, at qui ubi solitudinum facient, passum appellant, to ravage, to slaughter, to usurp under false titles, they call empire, and where they make a desert, they call it peace. Oxford Revised Translation. Discussion of peace is therefore at the same time a discussion on the form of such peace. Is it simple absence of mass organized killing war or does peace require a particular morality and justice? Just peace. A peace must be seen at least in two forms. A simple silence of arms, absence of war. Absence of war accompanied by particular requirements for the mutual settlement of relations, which are characterized by terms such as justice, mutual respect, respect for law and goodwill. More recently, advocates for radical reform in justice systems have called for a public policy adoption of non punitive, non violent restorative justice methods, and many of those studying the success of these methods, including a United Nations working group on restorative justice, have attempted to redefine justice in terms related to peace. From the late 2000s on, a theory of active peace has been proposed which conceptually integrates justice into a larger peace theory. Long periods 
The longest continuing period of neutrality among currently existing states is observed in Switzerland, which has had an official policy of neutrality and general peace since 1815 for 203 years as of 2018. This was made possible partly by the periods of relative peace in Europe and the world known as Pax Britannica 1815-1914, Pax Europea, Pax Americana since 1950s, and Pax Atomica also since the 1950s. Other examples of long periods of peace are the isolationistic Edo period also known as Tokugawa Shogunate in Japan 1603 to 1868 250 years Pax Kazarika in Hazar Khanate southeast Turkey about 700 to 950 AD 250 years Pax Romana in the Roman Empire for 190 or 206 years topic Movements and activism Topic. Pacifism Pacifism is the categorical opposition to the behaviors of war or violence as a means of settling disputes or of gaining advantage. Pacifism covers a spectrum of views ranging from the belief that international disputes can and should all be resolved via peaceful behaviors, to calls for the abolition of various organizations which tend to institutionalize aggressive behaviors, such as the military, or arms manufacturers, to opposition to any organization of society that might rely in any way upon governmental force. Such groups which sometimes oppose the governmental use of force include anarchists and libertarians. Absolute pacifism opposes violent behavior under all circumstance, including defense of self and others. Pacifism may be based on moral principles a deontological view or pragmatism a consequentialist view. Principled pacifism holds that all forms of violent behavior are inappropriate responses to conflict, and are morally wrong. Pragmatic pacifism holds that the costs of war and interpersonal violence are so substantial that better ways of resolving disputes must be found. Pacifists in general reject theories of just war. Pacifism tends to place its initial focus on the need for a peaceful behavior ahead of any focus on the need for a peaceful inner disposition. Topic: Organizations. Topic: United Nations. The United Nations UN is an international organization whose stated aims are to facilitate cooperation in international law, international security, economic development, social progress, human rights, and achieving world peace. The UN was founded in 1945 after World War II to replace the League of Nations, to stop wars between countries, and to provide a platform for dialogue. The UN, after approval by the Security Council, sends peacekeepers to regions where armed conflict has recently ceased or paused to enforce the terms of peace agreements and to discourage combatants from resuming hostilities. Since the UN does not maintain its own military, peacekeeping forces are voluntarily provided by member states of the UN. The forces, also called the Blue Helmets, who enforce UN accords are awarded United Nations medals, which are considered international decorations instead of military decorations. The peacekeeping force as a whole received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1988. <laughs> League of Nations The principal forerunner of the United Nations was the League of Nations. It was created at the Paris Peace Conference of 1919, and emerged from the advocacy of Woodrow Wilson and other idealists during World War I. The Covenant of the League of Nations was included in the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, and the League was based in Geneva until its dissolution as a result of World War II and replacement by the United Nations. The high hopes widely held for the League in the 1920s, for example amongst members of the League of Nations Union, gave way to widespread disillusion in the 1930s as the League struggled to respond to challenges from Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy, and Japan. One of the most important scholars of the League of Nations was Sir Alfred Zimmern. Like many of the other British enthusiasts for the League, such as Gilbert Murray and Florence Stahl, the so-called Greece and Peace. Set, he came to this from the study of the classics. 
the creation of the League of Nations, and the hope for informed public opinion on international issues expressed for example by the Union for Democratic Control during World War I, also saw the creation after World War I of bodies dedicated to understanding international affairs, such as the Council on Foreign Relations in New York and the Royal Institute of International Affairs at Chatham House in London. At the same time, the academic study of international relations started to professionalize, with the creation of the first Professorship of International Politics, named for Woodrow Wilson, at Aberystwyth, Wales, in 1919. Topic. Olympic Games The late 19th century idealist advocacy of peace which led to the creation of the Nobel Peace Prize, the Rhodes Scholarships, the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, and ultimately the League of Nations, also saw the re-emergence of the ancient Olympic ideal. Led by Pierre de Coubertin, this culminated in the holding in 1896 of the first of the modern Olympic Games. Topic. Nobel Peace Prize The highest honor awarded to peacemaker is the Nobel Prize in Peace, awarded since 1901 by the Norwegian Nobel Committee. It is awarded annually to internationally notable persons following the prize's creation in the will of Alfred Nobel. According to Nobles Will, the Peace Prize shall be awarded to the person who shall have done the most or the best work for fraternity between nations, for the abolition or reduction of standing armies and for the holding and promotion of peace congresses." <laughs> Rhodes Scholarships and other fellowships In creating the Rhodes Scholarships for outstanding students from the United States, Germany and much of the British Empire, Cecil Rhodes wrote in 1901 that the object is that an understanding between the three great powers will render war impossible and educational relations make the strongest tie. This peace purpose of the Rhodes Scholarships was very prominent in the first half of the 20th century, and became prominent again in recent years under Warden of the Rhodes House Donald Markwell, a historian of thought about the causes of war and peace. This vision greatly influenced Senator J. William Fulbright in the goal of the Fulbright Fellowships to promote international understanding and peace, and has guided many other international fellowship programs, including the Schwarzman Scholars to China created by Stephen A. Schwarzman in 2013. <laughs> Gandhi Peace Prize The International Gandhi Peace Prize, named after Mahatma Gandhi, is awarded annually by the Government of India. It is launched as a tribute to the ideals espoused by Gandhi in 1995 on the occasion of the 125th anniversary of his birth. This is an annual award given to individuals and institutions for their contributions towards social, economic and political transformation through non-violence and other Gandhian methods. The award carries 10 million rupees in cash, convertible in any currency in the world, a plaque and a citation. It is open to all persons regardless of nationality, race, creed or sex. Topic. Student Peace Prize The Student Peace Prize is awarded biennially to a student or a student organization that has made a significant contribution to promoting peace and human rights. Topic. Culture of Peace News Network The Culture of Peace News Network, otherwise known simply as CPNN, is a UN-authorized interactive online news network, committed to supporting the global movement for a culture of peace. Topic. The Sydney Peace Prize Every year in the first week of November, the Sydney Peace Foundation presents the Sydney Peace Prize. The Sydney Peace Prize is awarded to an organization or an individual whose life and work has demonstrated significant contributions to the achievement of peace with justice locally, nationally or internationally, the promotion and attainment of human rights, the philosophy, language and practice of non-violence. Other A peace museum is a museum that documents historical peace initiatives. Many peace museums also provide advocacy programs for nonviolent conflict resolution. This may include conflicts at the personal, regional or international level. 
Smaller institutions, Randolph Bourne Institute the McGill Middle East Program of Civil Society and Peace Building International Festival of Peace Poetry Topic Monuments The following are monuments to peace. Topic theories Many different theories of peace exist in the world of peace studies, which involves the study of de-escalation, conflict transformation, disarmament, and cessation of violence. The definition of peace can vary with religion, culture, or subject of study. One definition is that peace is a state of balance and understanding in yourself and between others, where respect is gained by the acceptance of differences, tolerance persists, conflicts are resolved through dialogue, people's rights are respected and their voices are heard, and everyone is at their highest point of serenity without social tension. Topic game theory The peace and war game is an approach in game theory to understand the relationship between peace and conflicts. The iterated game hypothesis was originally used by academic groups and computer simulations to study possible strategies of cooperation and aggression. As peacemakers became richer over time, it became clear that making war had greater costs than initially anticipated. One of the well studied strategies that acquired wealth more rapidly was based on Genghis Khan, i.e., a constant aggressor making war continually to gain resources. This led, in contrast, to the development of what's known as the provocable nice guy strategy, a peacemaker until attacked, improved upon merely to win by occasional forgiveness even when attacked. There exists a strategy of multiple players who can continue to gain wealth cooperating with each other while bleeding a constantly aggressive player. Topic balance of power theories The classical realist position is that the key to promoting order between states, and so of increasing the chances of peace, is the maintenance of a balance of power between states, a situation where no state is so dominant that it can lay down the law to the rest. Exponents of this view have included Metternich, Bismarck, Hans Morgenthau, and Henry Kissinger. A related approach, more in the tradition of Hugo Grotius than Thomas Hobbes, was articulated by the so-called English School of International Relations Theory such as Martin White in his book Power Politics 1946, 1978, and Hedley Bull in The Anarchical Society 1977. As the maintenance of a balance of power could in some circumstances require a willingness to go to war, some critics saw the idea of a balance of power as promoting war rather than promoting peace. This was a radical critique of those supporters of the Allied and Associated Powers who justified entry into World War I on the grounds that it was necessary to preserve the balance of power in Europe from a German bid for hegemony. In the second half of the 20th century, and especially during the Cold War, a particular form of balance of power, mutual nuclear deterrence, emerged as a widely held doctrine on the key to peace between the great powers. Critics argued that the development of nuclear stockpiles increased the chances of war rather than peace, and that the nuclear umbrella made it safe for smaller wars e.g. the Vietnam War and the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia to end the Prague Spring, so making such wars more likely. <laughs> Democratic peace theory The democratic peace theory holds that democracies will never go to war with one another. Topic. Free trade, interdependence and globalization It was a central tenet of classical liberalism, for example among English liberal thinkers of the late 19th and early 20th century, that free trade promoted peace. For example, the Cambridge economist John Maynard Keynes (1883–1946) said that he was brought up on this idea and held it unquestioned until at least the 1920s. During the economic globalization in the decades leading up to World War I, writers such as Norman Angel argued that the growth of economic interdependence between the great powers made war between them futile and therefore unlikely. He made this argument in 1914. These ideas have again come to prominence among liberal internationalists during the globalization of the late 20th and early 21st century. These ideas have seen capitalism as consistent with, even conducive to, peace. Topic. Socialism and managed capitalism Socialist, communist, and left-wing liberal writers of the 19th and 20th centuries e.g., Lenin, J.A. Hobson, John Strachey argued that capitalism caused war e.g. through promoting imperial or other economic rivalries that lead to international conflict. This led some to argue that international socialism was the key to peace. 
However, in response to such writers in the 1930s who argued that capitalism caused war, the economist John Maynard Keynes (1883–1946) argued that managed capitalism could promote peace. This involved international coordination of fiscal, monetary policies, an international monetary system that did not pit the interests of countries against each other, and a high degree of freedom of trade. These ideas underlay Keynes's work during World War II that led to the creation of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank at Bretton Woods in 1944, and later of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade subsequently the World Trade Organization. Theory of active peace Borrowing from the teachings of Norwegian theorist Johan Galtung, one of the pioneers of the field of peace research, on positive peace, and on the writings of Maine Quaker Gray Cox, a consortium of theorists, activists, and practitioners in the experimental John Woolman College Initiative have arrived at a theory of active peace. This theory posits in part that peace is part of a triad, which also includes justice and wholeness or well-being, an interpretation consonant with scriptural scholarly interpretations of the meaning of the early Hebrew word shalom. Furthermore, the consortium have integrated Galtung's teaching of the meanings of the terms peacemaking, peacekeeping, and peacebuilding, to also fit into a triadic and interdependent formulation or structure. Vermont Quaker John V. Wilmerding posits five stages of growth applicable to individuals, communities, and societies, whereby one transcends first the surface awareness that most people have of these kinds of issues, emerging successively into acquiescence, pacifism, passive resistance, active resistance, and finally into active peace, dedicating themselves to peacemaking, peacekeeping or peace building. Topic. International organization and law One of the most influential theories of peace, especially since Woodrow Wilson led the creation of the League of Nations at the Paris Peace Conference of 1919, is that peace will be advanced if the intentional anarchy of states is replaced through the growth of international law promoted and enforced through international organizations such as the League of Nations, the United Nations, and other functional international organizations. One of the most important early exponents of this view was Sir Alfred Zimmern, for example in his 1936 book The League of Nations and the Rule of Law. Topic. Transnational solidarity Many idealist Thinkers about international relations, e.g. in the traditions of Kant and Karl Marx, have argued that the key to peace is the growth of some form of solidarity between peoples or classes of people spanning the lines of cleavage between nations or states that lead to war. One version of this is the idea of promoting international understanding between nations through the international mobility of students, an idea most powerfully advanced by Cecil Rhodes in the creation of the Rhodes Scholarships, and his successors such as J. William Fulbright. Another theory is that peace can be developed among countries on the basis of active management of water resources. <inaudible> Lyotard postmodernism Following Wolfgang Dietrich, Wolfgang Sutzel and the Innsbruck School of Peace Studies, some peace thinkers have abandoned any single and all-encompassing definition of peace. Rather, they promote the idea of many pieces. They argue that since no singular, correct definition of peace can exist, peace should be perceived as a plurality. This postmodern understanding of pieces was based on the philosophy of Jean-François Lyotard. It served as a fundament for the more recent concept of trans-rational pieces and elicitive conflict transformation. In 2008 Dietrich enlarged his approach of the many pieces to the so-called five families of peace interpretations, the energetic, moral, modern, post-modern and trans-rational approach. Trans-rationality unites the rational and mechanistic understanding of modern peace in a relational and culture-based manner with spiritual narratives and energetic interpretations. The systemic understanding of trans-rational pieces advocates a client-centered method of conflict transformation, the so-called elicitive approach. Topic. Calendar Day Peace Day was founded as a day of peace, to recognize and honor and promote peace. Peace Day is commemorated each year at the United Nations, and by every organization that is associated with the United Nations. Topic. Peace and conflict studies 
Peace and Conflict Studies is an academic field which identifies and analyses violent and nonviolent behaviors, as well as the structural mechanisms attending violent and nonviolent social conflicts. This is to better understand the processes leading to a more desirable human condition. One variation Peace Studies is an interdisciplinary effort aiming at the prevention, de escalation, and solution of conflicts. This contrasts with war studies polemology, directed at the efficient attainment of victory in conflicts. Disciplines involved may include political science, geography, economics, psychology, sociology, international relations, history, anthropology, religious studies, and gender studies, as well as a variety of other disciplines. Topic. Measurement and ranking Although peace is widely perceived as something intangible, various organizations have been making efforts to quantify and measure it. The Global Peace Index produced by the Institute for Economics and Peace is a known effort to evaluate peacefulness in countries based on 23 indicators of the absence of violence and absence of the fear of violence. The last edition of the index ranks 163 countries on their internal and external levels of peace. According to the 2017 Global Peace Index, Iceland is the most peaceful country in the world while Syria is the least peaceful one. Fragile States Index formerly known as the Failed States Index created by the Fund for Peace focuses on risk for instability or violence in 178 nations. This index measures how fragile a state is by 12 indicators and sub-indicators that evaluate aspects of politics, social economy, and military facets in countries. The 2015 Failed State Index reports that the most fragile nation is South Sudan, and the least fragile one is Finland. University of Maryland publishes the Peace and Conflict Instability Ledger in order to measure peace. It grades 163 countries with five indicators, and pays the most attention to risk of political instability or armed conflict over a three-year period. The most recent ledger shows that the most peaceful country is Slovenia on the contrary Afghanistan is the most conflicted nation. Besides indicated above reports from the Institute for Economics and Peace, Fund for Peace, and University of Maryland, other organizations including George Mason University release indexes that rank countries in terms of peacefulness. Topic. See also Topic. References Topic. Notes Topic. External links Carnegie Endowment for International Peace Lemonade a la Carnegie accessed 16 October 2012 Research Guide on Peace by the United Nations Library at Geneva PeaceWiki Peace Monuments Around the World Peace at Curlie Working Group on Peace and Development Answers to how do we achieve world peace?